Notable maximum. I'll go do this again. NFT give away. Exclaim, 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 because it's very exciting. I'm just chatting. Confirm and go live. Do updating video stream transmission and we are live three seconds in to the rest of our lives welcome yeah, yeah. to crypto collective our daily dash into the dgen world of nfts metaverse DeFi, and everything crypto with me yeah. as often not always because you won't be here every every single day but often try hey brother how you doing how are you guys good how you going bro good we have a grand total of zero viewers but <laughs> that will change we're only, we're only 30 seconds in um yes thank you for all those people who are coming across from facebook land we are luring them across and i'm very surprised that we haven't yeah. been banned because we are um being a bad influence we're literally saying we're leaving facebook. yeah we are leading them on mass out of the safe haven of those blue waters into the purple yeah. bubble of twitch and everything that is true community so <clears throat> Later on, not right now, but we are going to thank you for joining us here, those early founding members um, who have both joined us here on Twitch and also joined the Crypto Collective Discord. Um, and we're going to be giving uh, an NFT away. We currently have 16 people on that list, so you might be one of those. Actually, let's just flash that in case someone does see. I'm just going to flash on my screen um, yep. who those people currently are. So there we go. We've got Osaka Vota. Golden by Maria, Victoria Redbard, Honey Safari, N. Gosh, David Nicholas Seven, Alexandra, Alexandra Diana Shana, Abigail Bremer, Mel C99, Chris Ferg74, Stingray Mary, Simon Carstensen, Lon, Lons Harvey, Natma Eth, Eth, uh, Tia Stonier, and The Moose Worldwide. So one of those oh. amazing 16 lucky people are going to be the recipients of that thing. Uh, yeah, man. Um, let's, uh, let's hope it's you. Let's hope it's the person watching. Yes. Um, I thought you meant me. I was like, yeah, cool. You can transfer. It. Well, well, you actually appeared on the list along with me and a couple of other people. And I'm like, no, you're not. Good. Oh, yes. Victoria uh, Redbud is actually Redbud. here in the Twitch as well. Oh, and Golden by Maria. Ooh, both of you are on the list, Victoria oh. and Golden by Maria. So you may be that recipient. Yeah. We should have made it like you got to be live with us. They'd be cheering then. They would be cheering then. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We should have actually said that. But anyway, <laughs> that's all good. Um, we might. No, I won't say that because that's been. That's been no, we, we, can't, we can't change rules can't, midstream. Uh, be we're fair. not changing the rules. No. We're fair. We have to. Pew, 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 pew. Uh, well, disco, disco party. What's on the What's on the uh, list today? I've got a few things I want to chat about. Yeah. Um, I want to chat about the webinar coming up this weekend. I want to chat mm -hmm. about crypto collective, um, and I yeah. want to chat about Ethereum party. Oh, and also, yeah. I mean, Victoria, we've got to get you on soon as well because um, Victoria is actually initiating uh, a Web three project of their own. But um, yeah. yeah, maybe we can talk about it another time with uh, Victoria actually on the stream. But yeah, what, what would yeah. you like to add to the stack tonight? Um, I just wanted to talk about, I was going to do a little bit of market talk um, just in regards to um, investor mind, mind uh, set. So it's more so this isn't trading talk at all. This is like where we're at right now, like looking at the weekly charts and things like that. Um, so we're looking, um, oh, I might, might as well do it now. How about we just knock it on the head? Knock um, it on the proverbial head. I will. Uh, let me share. Where can I? Hang on, I'll share my screen. Um, bah, 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 bah. Oh, my baby Ethereum is looking so nice. <laughs> um, just don't try and do any transactions on it. But apart from that, price looks good. Um, where am I going? But you know Sorry. what? Like, I mean, the gas fees for anyone who's tried to buy anything and ended up paying uh, more gas fees than actually the NFT was worth. There's a particular project, okay? Um, I, I'm going to name the project. I think it's fine. It's out in the open. It's called Infamous Skulls. Um, mm. And it's by an artist that, that created it is a well-known comic artist. Um, but it's just really, uh, it's really just flopped, unfortunately, on release. Mm -hmm. Not to say that it can't change. Things change very quickly in crypto land. If, if he continues and delivers on his roadmap, it very 
may well turn around. Um, but there was a few little things that people weren't happy with. And the price of the floor is like really low to the point yeah. where it was literally, I don't know how many zeros, but I was going to buy one one more for 0 0.00001 ETH, something like mm -hmm. that. It was going to be like five wow. cents. And then I was, so I was going to buy a five cent NFT and the gas fee was 135 USD. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, that's that's kind of that's one of the negative sides of Ethereum, which you know yeah. they're moving to Ethereum two next year. So who knows what's going to yeah. happen there? But having layer twos on top of it, like Immutable mm -hmm. X, is just such a, a gift for those layer two solutions. Otherwise, maybe it would be too much of a, a megalith if it just did everything. Yeah, right. I think, and and I actually think this would be something that we should really dive into. Whether it doesn't have to be tonight, but um more about immutable x and kind of getting people's heads around so they kind of understand it um i'm actually in the early stages myself so i'm uh, i'm gonna go back into the study books myself um but i've um yeah it looks promising i just think that uh i just think that um in the in in the short to midterm people just aren't going to care about the gas fee thing because price keeps going up and uh so number go up, as we say in crypto world, and like all the big dogs who are holding onto their Ethereum, they're not transacting or anything, they're just holding it, right? And they're, as people more acquiring, 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 price goes up, you know, the only fee they've got to worry about is when they unload their bags, which at whatever price they're going to unload it at. So I think it's definitely a, it's a definitely a talking point for Ethereum. Um, it can't continue. It simply can't continue, especially in the NFT space where there's a lot of retail um, investors coming, a lot of kids coming in, right? There's kids who are 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds coming in. They can't afford $150. I mean, none of us can afford a $150 transaction, let alone like some kid who's at school. What you expect him to like buy a project and rep it at school and pay 150 US dollars for it, you know? Yeah. So this is where... Um, and, and you know me, man, I'm the biggest ETH dog going around, but this is where I believe, and I've been preaching it for a long time, is where Solana really steps in um, in regards to their ecosystem and, and what they're doing and the fact that, you know, I think I've made, I think I've made nearly 300 transactions on Solana, probably more, probably 500, and um, different like things like whether doing an NFT or a transfer or whatever it may be, and I, my fees are up to about a dollar forty eight. Wow! You know, what I, and I've done so like five hundred yeah. plus transactions. Like, so this isn't going to just keep dragging on and be unnoticed, right? Because mm. once people start understanding it a bit more, so what often happens is you come into the NFT space and you're introduced to Ethereum because that's where it all started, right? You've got OpenSea and everything's connected there, and it's all well and dandy when you could buy an, buy an NFT, you know nine months ago with a you know a five dollar gas fee or a ten dollar gas fee i remember when you know it was up near twenty dollars you're like what twenty dollars oh, that's a joke and now if something's 20 bucks gas fee you're like oh, oh my God, sweet that was good um, yeah exactly so um it just doesn't happen these days so uh yeah it, it's it's a massive issue that needs to be fixed and needs to be rectified because it's just simply unsustainable um they're, they've got a massive advantage though that they're a trailblazer and they've led the mm. way and everything. So. But that's that's why I think, like for sure, you, you mentioned Solana and it's definitely number the two in the NFT space as far as a, a, a you could say a rival blockchain. In the end of the day, there's enough space for everyone in the in the playing field, at least a, a handful yeah. of of key layer ones. But um, you've got things like Immutable X, which are still built on Ethereum. So you don't have to feel like you're running away from Ethereum. You're still using it. You have a single uh, gas fee at the beginning to initiate your wallet. But after that, there's no fees, which is just really amazing. Also, yeah. for those of you interested in sort of the community of Ethereum moving forward, they are bringing out Ethereum to next year. I'm not sure the exact date. It's like early to, to mid year. They've also got other solutions. You know, everything that, that are, for example, proof of work, moving to proof of stake. For example, the full node um, duplication of the entire ledger across every single node is now being broken up into shards. So you don't actually, it's not as weighty for you to run part of the network. For example, ZK rollups. So you can actually bundle so, transactions off the chain and then you, you sort of bring it on in a single transaction. So there's a lot of different I'm gonna, things. I'm going to do a Troy to Kevin moment there and say, let's try and unpackage what you just said again in um non-technical talk because sure. the way you said it was a hundred percent right but let's try and let's yeah, yeah. see 
if okay, you can let's do talk that. about it. So, what is centralized versus decentralized internet essentially yeah. so centralized internet is where you've got these big monolith technocracies like um, amazon like google all these people and they have these huge servers which hold all of this data they've got big yeah. farms and factories essentially of the best computers and so it makes sense they've got all these computers to hold all the info when we start to decentralize there's no big daddy and big mummy to do that for us so yeah. you we actually have to have community to hold like the the servers the information yeah. the ledgers so when you think of blockchain really what we come down to is this open ledger which is like an open record of all the transactions that have gone back and forth and it makes it trackable yeah, anyway. so we can see if anyone's sort of um done anything wrong or we can track where money's going so it's a really good yeah. way of having a trustless system because we can see we don't have to trust you however what starts to happen is with all of the transactions happening if you want to duplicate that open ledger across all of the people who are holding the computer servers um yeah. it gets very weighty can you imagine every yeah. single ha person having a copy of every single transaction so instead what they're yeah. doing is they're, they're introducing this thing called sharding which is where they actually break it into pieces and delegate those across the community so you don't actually have to have an entire uh, logbook of all of Ethereum's transactions on your computer. Yeah, yeah, and that's perfect. That and, and and if anyone's got any questions in regards to what Atlas just said, there, make sure you drop a comment in or, or ask us. But um, yeah, that's that's exactly that's perfect. Um, how Atlas has explained that, and these things can only further assist and help the space. Um, and and as technology improves and grows, and you know more and more and more and more users are coming on board, you know we these these systems do need to expand but you know sometimes these things take time and we're going to have growing pains we're definitely going to have um we're definitely going to have um rivals that step up um solana is doing that right now um i don't think it's it, it's going to get anywhere near ethereum especially in this run but definitely for the future it's one to keep an eye on it's now top five coin um i personally feel that it'll be solidified in there um so so yeah, so that's that's something that um, is is really interesting. There's other chains that are coming out that I'm massively bullish on that I believe have got a real real chance of um, taking some of that load. And I'm going to touch on them in the coming weeks. Um, I don't need to touch on them now because there's a chain that hasn't even been released yet that I'm hugely bullish on. Um, and just to share that information with you guys, if you go and do something with it, you can, or you don't have to. Right? I'm just going to share information on here. Um, that's what this is all about. So. Let's have a look. I'm really excited. Just what you mentioned about the way Solana's going at the moment. I'm just going to drag across yep. CoinGecko, just looking at the top uh, 10 coins. Yep. And this is a huge moment, I think. We, you know, we've had Solana, it obviously started wherever it was down the, the ranks. But I remember yep. it was, you know, just starting to touch on some of these coins. And now mm. it's flipping them just in the last week or so. It's flipped Cardano. So for those of you who know, that's a, a layer one solution um, yeah. by one of the engineers who actually was involved in Ethereum, Charles Hoskinson. Yeah. It's been a slow burner, set around $2 for a lot longer than the holders of it would like. But anyway, it's come along and it's flipped a lot of these coins, XRP, yeah. Cardano, and now Tether, which is a stable coin. And now mm -hmm. it's currently sitting based on market cap. It's basically uh, number four. And you can, yeah. I mean, that's a huge thing. When you look at what's above it, Bitcoin, okay, no contest. Ethereum, which is what we've been yeah. talking about, which is essentially the operating system for the the world computer um, and which so much is built on all these dApps or decentralized apps and then you've got binance coin and binance coin is linked to binance obviously uh bnb which has its own smart chain which is one of the biggest exchanges in the world um yep. so understandably has you know big market cap because people that's where they go to trade and such a thing so yep. for it for solana to be just the next one after those three yep. um it really shows that it's in the in the big it's leagues there's definite hype as well though, dude. So I have no doubt that as fast as something rises, it usually has the same correction, right? So mm. we're definitely going to be seeing people take profits. Um, this Solana was $3 back in um, February this year. Wow. Um, so, so we are going to see people taking profits. People have been taking profits as it's been increasing. Um, so um, yeah, no doubt that, that it, it'll definitely be one of those ones that, rockets and then has big corrections rockets and big big corrections i feel in my personal opinion that's only because of the massive rise that it's had um another one that i i, I keep stressing all the time and i really think people should is on actually on your screen right now number 28 
FTX token. So FTX. Yeah, I wanted, to, I wanted to talk about that. That's actually why I was pausing around there. Yeah, because if you look at something yeah. like Binance Coin BNB and FTT, which is the FTX token, do you want yeah. to give us an idea of why perhaps it is down where it is? Yeah. Um, and yeah, because, you know, BNB, which is comparable to, is at number three. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, um, so Binance um, is, is still classed as the number one cryptocurrency exchange in the world as per users, I believe. Um, and even and, and volume as well, I believe too. But FTX token, right? So FTT is um, so FTX exchange has been one of these huge, huge um, success stories. Um, it started in 2019, so it's still a very, very fresh young company. I think it was early 2019 or might have been late 2018. It's in the pits of the bull market it started, which is when all the great building get, get started. Um, and uh, it's um, Hang on, if I if I can you still hear me? You're, yeah, you're you're there, but you're frozen. Can you oh, maybe okay, stop cool. your video and start again? Yeah, I don't know. It was that's a bit strange, isn't it? That's all good. Oh, look, as long as you guys can hear me, you can stop the video though. That's all cool. But no, no, but bring it back um, on. So stop your video, and then can you put it back on again? And we'll bring yeah. you back because I like to see your beard sway when you talk. Yeah. Uh, oh, you've just got to start it again. Troy is talking. Okay, where are you? Where's my friend? There he is. Mute more. Ask to start video. Okay, start my video. Plinky plonk. There he is. I'm back. back. All right, cool. So, what we saw with Binance Coin was, um, and there's people in the game who are fresh enough to remember this. It was only last year or earlier this year, maybe. Jesus, it's things just <laughs> gel into one. But I think it was only at the beginning of this year that it was trading. And you might be able to bring this up on Coin Gecko. It was trading around thirty dollars, thirty five dollars Binance Coin, um, and. Um, it had this huge run up from 35 to 400 ish um, in April, May. And that was due to a few reasons. And one of the prime reasons was they released Binance Smart Chain. Sure. And Binance Smart Chain is kind of basically just a replica of the Ethereum blockchain. So it was another um, way to do transactions, but cheaper, right? So it was uh, massively cheaper. So similar to Solana, massively cheaper than Ethereum, um, but it was on the Binance Smart Chain. Um, and then, so we saw, all of a sudden saw not only people um, using Binance Coin to trade, right, to trade on Binance Exchange because it has a massive user base. So therefore, a lot of people are using Binance Coin. But we also saw Binance Coin being massively used um, for, so it was essentially the gas price, right, for Binance Smart Chain. So all of a sudden, all these people were moving on to Binance Smart Chain because a whole heap of um uh, AMMs or automated uh, ma money uh, markets come up that were um, uh, like Pancake Swap, for example, uh, Alpaca Finance, all these different DeFi um, uh, DeFi um, organizations come up, and therefore, all of a sudden, Binance Coin was not only being used on the exchange, but it was also be using as gas for all these DeFi transactions. Yeah. So, so here, just, just so you can see here, I did. Uh what you requested here. So on the screen currently is the chart. And as yep. you can see here back. Yeah, um, $30, was it? Yeah, January. so this is November, December, right through to January. We're looking at about 27 yeah. up. To, and when we talk about dollars, it's in USD. Um, yep. And then we're coming up around here to say 30. And then suddenly it just in around March, yeah, so it rockets up to 100 or I think $300. It was I think it was February, March, mm. Binance Smart Chain got released and you can see what happened, right? Yeah. Now, what's actually currently in place, and once again, this is not financial advice, do not just blindly follow what Troy and Atlas says, but what is currently taking place on the FTX system as we speak is that they've just released um, FTX NFTs. So um, all of, uh, so pretty much the majority of the um, NFTs on the Solana network most of them, I think about 70% of them are listed on FTX. Um, I believe there's going to be specific FTX NFTs as well. So not only is there this huge NFT ecosystem getting created, but there's also um, um, talk of um, a DeFi kind of platform happening as well. So there's kind of all this speculation happening. But on top of all of that, FTT or FTX exchange, so with the FTT token, is is is... I don't know who is in charge of their marketing, but they're the best marketing people in the in the history of the world, right? They've they've literally they are going to take the US market. They've already taken the US market by storm, but they're like they've got stadium. I think it's um 
Dodgers Stadium or something. Like it's one of the massive stadiums. It's now FTX Stadium. Like they've got so they've they've gone with the sports thing, right? They've got Tom Brady. So anyone who knows sports, Tom Brady is like pretty much the number one name in sports in America because he's a star quarterback. And Tom Brady got into crypto. He's now best mates with Sam, who's the CEO of FTX. Um, and he's now a spokesperson, right? So they just released this huge video, a uh, huge ad, sorry, over um, the Super Bowl and all this stuff, right? So it's just crazy, right? And, and Yeah, that's Miami, Miami, Florida for the Miami, FTX Florida. arena. For it's the Dolphins, is it not the, something? The home of Miami Heat. Miami Heat, yeah, there you go. And I think there's another baseball stadium somewhere is going to be called FTX Stadium. I don't know. But anyway, long story short, whoever's doing their marketing is the best marketer in the history of the world. And secondly, on top of all that, having an amazing marketing team, they've got an incredible exchange that is super trusted and is um, um, is, is, is nearly instantaneous with its deposits, withdrawals, customer service is brilliant. They've kind of like ticked all the boxes that, because Binance was released in 2016, Binance has had to play a bit of a catch-up game because back in 2016, whoever was in crypto then, um, it was it was the Wild West, right? So things were crazy. So, um, you know, you kind of could get away with more, shall we say, because there was much less regulation where FTX got introduced in the height of all the, all the depths, I guess you could say, of the bear market when all these regulations were taking place. So they're pretty much catered for all of the regulations, they got all that on board and now they're just full throttle in expanding their network. So I'm not saying anything that FTT is going to do the same skyrocketing rise in price that Binance coin has done. But I'll tell you what, um, if it doesn't do that, it has to do something like all this stuff that's building up and up and up and up and up can only relate to uh, an explosion eventually. Um, so yeah. one would think not financial advice, don't listen blindly to everything Atlas and Troy talk about um but yes so that's just a that's just a bit of a tip um did you want me to share my screen so i can show you what i'm looking at with ethereum and please so yeah yeah um biddies are looking good as well um let's start with bitcoin i'll share my screen uh, zoom share can you see that? Yep. Awesome. So this is the daily chart. Um, so I now being uh, in the investor mindset and pretty much out of uh, trading mindset at the moment, especially with um, the way the market is right now. Um, I'm not saying you can't trade because trading is, is exceptional. And, and if you're good at it, you can make a lot of money. But I look at the daily and the weekly charts for my Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, moves and things like that. So if we look at the weekly chart here, this is just this is just sex on fire. This this chart right now. Um, I mean, you've you've created um, it, what's been created here is just immense. Like we go back to November 2020. This is where we broke the 20k. Um, we've gone up. We retested at that 27 uh, mark. Obviously, we had that big push up till April. You know, we touched 64,000. Had a correction, it bounced back up, and then we had what we call a triple bottom. So you can see one, two, three, we had three touches of this 28,000 mark, which is a super, super strong support. So what that tells me is a couple of things, right? It tells me that one, $28,000 has a massive, massive support line and people value Bitcoin at more than 28,000 US dollars um, because it's failed to push through it three times on three weekly pushes. Um, and secondly, when we kind of look at um, the coming bull market, because um, I hate to be the party pooper here, but, Crypto and all markets don't just constantly rock it up. Um, we do have corrections and we are going to have a correction as well. You know, you could potentially see something like 28,000 potentially being the absolute bottom of a, of an, of a new bear market, right? Um, or, or if, we, you know, we've built a really, really strong support. See, I've got some support lines here. We've built some strong support lines around 51, 47. You can see that there's a lot of weekly closes around these kind of figures. So, you know, if we're going to see any kind of rocketing moves up past 100 or anything like that, um, then, then you know, we could potentially see retracements back down to around here, you know, in the pits of the next bear market before we make our next move up. And that's just how things work in four-year cycles. Um, but if we look at Ethereum as well, so this is the daily chart right now. The daily chart Ooh. is absolutely beautiful. Um, I mean, 
at the moment, it's giving us absolutely no reason not to be bullish, um, especially on Ethereum. If we look at the weekly chart, once again, it just looks like absolute sex on fire. Um, it's incredible. We've got this is going to be week. called the sex on fire edition. This, yeah, this it, should be. it should be. So we've got our higher high here. We've got um, a higher low and now we're creating another higher high. So we're very, very much in an upward trend on the weekly um, time frame, which is the most important thing for me because hourly, four hourly, even daily sometimes can get confusing because we have up down days and whatever. But if you look at the weekly and then even the monthly charts of these coins, you see that the trajectory is this. So from an investor mindset, things are sitting pretty nice. Um, you know, if you had your wits about you and you've, you've been holding since these highs of January 2018, you're absolutely cheering right now. You would have had to have balls of steel not to sell in this brutal bull market that we had for two years. But, you know, you're cheering right now. So overall, the market is looking very, very healthy. Um, we've got some coins that are popping. A couple of my personal favorites. I've got one here called Mobile Coin. Um, Mobile Coin, I believe, is going to be a huge player in the future. So the app, you know, the app signal, obviously Talus, um, Atlas, you know it, but um, people should know the app signal because you should be using it. It's an encrypted messenger service. And um, mobile, mobile coin actually have the, I forget the wording, I don't know if it's the rights, but actually have the, um, let's call it the rights, to um, create uh, encrypted payment services on signal. Right, and this Imagine is something that, that is yeah, that would be actually, like, kind of like Twitter having its Bitcoin tipping. That would be like this the equivalent to be able to talk to anyone and send anyone money anywhere in the world. It's like a brand new. It's like a whole new, um, like a whole new level for privacy coins. Anonymous right? banking. Uh, so it's pretty. It's pretty epic. Um, we can see that we've had a massive breakout this week. Um, a couple of days ago, we had a huge breakout from the nine dollar market. It's been trending downwards smash that um, downward trend. Obviously the last couple of days had a bit of a retracement, but I'm expecting here mobile coin to continue uh, a very similar kind of trajectory um, over the coming weeks. Um, you know, once again, beating this um, mark here of 22, you know, getting through that $30 frame and we saw it touched $78, I think it was back in April. So there's a couple of little coins that you start seeing popping, right? These are the kind of, coins that you'll see that are outside the top 100 have amazingly strong projects amazingly strong products and you'll start to see these popping one thing i will just say um just so people uh, kind of get their wits about them in this in this bull run of what we're potentially going to have is that please don't um and we're all guilty for this right i'm i'm guilty of this i've done it before but please don't um oh sorry i just saw victoria's question what was the name of the app I think you are you talking about Signal maybe? Signal, yeah. So Signal, Signal app, along with you know Telegram, um, it's one of those encrypted end-to-end -end messaging services. Um, a lot of people do use Telegram for more their kind of community like feeds, but um, Signal I find particularly if you're in crypto. So if, if you're in the crypto space and you're wanting to link in with a technology um, coin, a lot of them have their community feeds on Telegram. So for me personally, my Telegram is almost unusable because um, it's literally updating by the second. And so for me, I use a lot of my actual communications with groups in something called Signal. So I'll write it here, yeah. just S-I-G-N-A-L. Um, and it's similar to what WhatsApp, you know, when Facebook bought WhatsApp, it was because it was an end-to-end -end encrypted message service. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, and sorry, what I was just saying was, please don't... Um, it's always going to feel like you're going to be in second place in this run. It's always going to feel that the coins you have aren't performing as well as some other coin that you've seen on Twitter or some other coin on social media or your best friend has been on the latest dog coin and it's done a 500x, right? It's always going to feel like the coins that you're on are not doing as well as, um, you know, the person across the road. But the thing is that when, it, when you're in a bull market, everyone wins. So just hold on, you know, and, and you know, when we start reaching the tops and, the time, you know, we start reaching some crucial periods when we're talking about, you know, you go to a party. Well, we're starting to feel that now. I went to a Melbourne Cup luncheon and we had um, people who were randomly, who knew I was into crypto but never spoke about it before. I'm like, oh, Troy, you know about, you know, crypto. Or oh, I've got, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? So we're, we're really starting to get into that retail area now where, you know, you're going to get into an Uber and the Uber driver's talking to you about the top 10 crypto and, all that kind of stuff, right? And and that's signs, I'm not saying we are at the top, but that's signs of 
the top, right? Because smart money buys in December 2018, January 2019, when Bitcoin was three and a half thousand dollars. And now they're selling at the end of the four year cycle, which is coming up in the next few months. I'm not saying we're at the top. I'm not saying we're going to get further, but this is just the time to be like, okay, cool. We're, you know, we are, we are very, very much in retail. You know, you know, you might get your mum or your auntie calling you up about the best crypto. Who knows, right? So these are the kind of things to look out for. So we are starting to enter that period. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much my take. I just wanted to say the market's healthy. Everything's looking good. Um, we can and just a little adage, a little proverb to add to people's uh, <clears throat> library of sayings is to buy the rumor, sell the news. So yeah. we've got to kind of ask, are we in the rumor stage where it's like someone you knew kind of rumored and what's this thing? You don't really know about it. Or is it the news? Is it on your your TV? Is it, you know, being bumped by Time Magazine and this and financial news and review? By that stage, it's the news. So anyway, do what you want with that information, but that tends to be the way that these cycles work. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we are officially heading into the four-year high in December to January. So that's not saying the high is going to come then. It could be before or after that. But that is in and about where we're looking at a potential four-year cycle high based on historical data, which is all we've got to go off. Um, as Bitcoin's only been around for 11 years, so 12 years. So, so yeah. Um, cool, man. Um, that's pretty much a wrap on that. Unless anyone had any questions, I'll see you answered the questions. So that's all good. Did you want to go over... Um, anything in the nft space dude or metaverse or um not so much i mean i was going to maybe look at some charts but i think we've done we've done enough of that um for today yeah. i was basically sort of looking at dot looking at um the kind of, sort of sideways movement after a big boom in the metaverse coins after facebook's announcement everyone just went oh let's get in there so there was this mm -hmm. massive face melt that happened and now it's kind of chilled out a bit but i think you know probably enough charts for today um, yeah. I wanted to just let you know from sort of behind the scenes what we're doing in Crypto Collective. I've had uh, a meeting already today actually with Kevin and some of the presenters from the webinar for this weekend. That's feeling really, really strong. Um, the Discord itself, you know, is now open to, to public and we've got some people participating. I just want to encourage anyone who's watching, please get involved there and post your questions. I'm on there every day. We've got a few of the other mentors from Crypto Collective present as well. Plenty of um, wealth of knowledge to to avail yourself of there. Um, we've got this webinar coming up, which is a two day webinar, Saturday and Sunday. And we've got so much, so much value. We've got people that trade in DeFi, people in the metaverse gaming space, some OGs. I've got a, a Bitcoin maximalist. He might not like me saying that, but he, he's definitely very pro, pro Bitcoin. He'll be talking about kind of what money is, why crypto and why Bitcoin in particular is the new digital gold. Um, so yeah, just really, really bullish on us, to be honest. Um, I've currently yeah. got a lot of these replays from Twitch going to my Open World Arcade YouTube, but I think it's easier just to bring it all under the, the umbrella of Crypto Collective because there's so many of us with our shoulder to the wheel. So I'm going to be shifting that over in the coming day and making sure all of these replays go to YouTube as well for you to share. But anything you can do to bring us on board, you know, you benefit from the wealth of knowledge of this amazing group of people, of some really long-term investors, you know, I'm thinking of people like, you know, Marcus, for example, you know, I'm not sure how old he was trading, but it was probably <laughs> probably yeah. too young to even yeah. trade legally. But yeah, some some long term OGs from not just crypto, but from finance in general. Um, and we want to enable this education phase to happen. You know, Troy and Kevin have been giving so much free content with webinars for so long. And basically the alpha leak on us meaning like the news and what we've got coming is we're going to have a number of different streams of onboarding for people that are want 101 basics on crypto like how to get a hot wallet what is crypto through to top level finance guys from banking corporate level who actually want to start to move into the space and then as a medium tier people who are creators entrepreneurs coaches who want to move their communities across to entities and crypto as well so these are all the kind of things that i'm really um, excited to be providing so basically just that's kind of news on what we're up to in the back rooms at the moment planning all these sort of things um and yeah also just just big up seeing some of the things that our team is involved in for example like kevin kevin mendoza of crypto collective he's involved in the stems 
uh, release with Monograph. And basically that's, I think that at the moment, a lot of the NFTs are uh, pictorial or PFP, profile picture NFTs, um, which I think have great utility in the coming metaverse where these will be pulled out to be 3D characters you can walk around as. But what about photos? What And for example, um, Where My Vans Go is one, a drifter is the thing's name, is a photographer who's like a parkour building scaler and he basically takes photos of his feet dangling over all kinds of things and those nfts are right up there with blue chip kind of level um and now music like what is going to happen for musicians and how are we going to distribute music as nfts and so monograph is doing some really interesting stuff with their stems project um right now there's timberland involved with that and some other coming big names to come as well um and so yeah we're just really innovating in that space so huge props to to care for that and so that's the that's the kind of space that we want to give you guys access access to and you do have access to through crypto collective yeah 100 percent um and that's what it's about guys like honestly we just have fun doing this you know um so and and we and the fun kind of was getting drained out of it with facebook just through all its um you know just through it being facebook <laughs> so um we wanted to um yeah continue the journey on absolutely but like do it in a way that we can um yeah that we can that we can really interact and um yeah push this thing along so um if you've got any friends or family or anyone else and you're listening back on this recording and you're like oh yeah i told john to join the facebook group tell him you know shoot him the twitch invite and the discord invite um you know or just the link or whatever and say oh yeah if you want to still catch up with the guys you know it's all getting done there we're gonna like what atlas said earlier we're gonna try and be doing daily things i mean atlas has really taken um, he's really taken the lead on this and, and I really have Atlas to thank for this, um, Kevin and myself, um, because he's really taken the lead on this and creating some amazing work. Um, and uh, yeah, there's some, some incredible stuff that's coming. Um, and just, just to show you guys what's possible, right. Um, I think it's really, it's really key um, just to, just to show you guys what's possible and yeah, come in and nerd out with us and you might learn a thing, thing or two or make some money and um that's what it's all about yeah and a shout out to anyone who's watching this and and from the creator mindset wants to kind of get involved one of the things i think is going to happen really soon i've got a few friends i'm talking to who have some space and sandbox but i think we're going to start to have a little building party i want to um, i've got a particular nft project which i'll be launching soon um, which involves voxel art so that's like the 3d pixels and if yeah. you like i said you go to vox edit which is simply the sandbox uh, creation suite it's free so just go just google sandbox game log in there download it's available for windows and mac so no limitations there and you're actually going to be able to get in there and start making characters which then you can directly sell on the marketplace so it's a free way in to contribute to the space and start building but beyond that i want to through the crypto collective one of the channels i might create might be a, a metaverse architects guild or something like that because with the access to a few bits of land which i have um i and of course, it's up to the landowners what we do with it. But regardless, I think it'd be fun to have a little bit of a squad and we get into Vox edit, we build things, we go into Sandbox, we, yeah. we, we build it out. And I think right now we are pre metaverse as a 3d space we're talking about metaverse we're starting to use analogies to get our head around this kind of single membrane that's going to link all websites and make them interoperable but as a human experience it's still in the the fantasy stage you know we've got movies like ready player one which talk about it and i mean also vr goggles they're way off being ubiquitous like phones are um, so i'm really excited to be on this pioneering edge where we can mess up we can get in there and experiment there's so little activity that people are just grateful to have something cool in their space because you've got all these big pocketed whales that bought big bits of land but if it's just dead land it's dead real estate and no one yeah. wants to go there so that's basically a call out if you are a creator go grab a copy a free copy of vox edit from sandbox game get your head around how to make stuff head into discord and in the next couple of weeks once you know the webinar and, and all the immediate plans are over i might add another channel there and start doing regular expeditions and that could be also something we can stream live here mm. is like let's go into sandbox let's build things let's actually bring some population activity there yeah and i think the other thing as well guys um you know guys listening live or listening back um we're after um some community leaders as well, which would be epic. Um, we've got a couple of people who are helping out, but it's just like that feel free. I mean, there's been some amazing people adding in some cool things in discord and um, 
uh, I'm, I'm going to be active again in there now. I've, I've been super bad with it the last few days. So, um, yeah, but we've got some amazing people who are really stepping up and sharing their things. So, um, you make sure you jump in there and, you know, share your experiences, talk about what you want to do. Um, you know, whether it be from a creative side or from a, um, uh, you know, from an investment side or whatever it may be. Um, you know, you, it's not like you've got to be some creative genius to be involved in all this. You can just immerse yourself in it and then just see what happens. Um, I'm by no means no creative person at all, but um, I love immersing in it and kind of working with people like it and using my skills for what I can do. But I think it's really, um, it's just a really exciting time to be alive. I have an exciting time to, to learn about this stuff. Um, and yeah, we're being on the forefront is epic. And obviously if we can, work out ways and understand right ways to monetize this kind of thing which you absolutely can um then who's to say you can't do you know whatever it may be in the future um you know there's there's i think just getting started i think that's something that um i know that we're both passionate about and we're going to try and really start but i think a really really great way of getting started is literally just to sign up and start doing some um play to earn video games just for fun and earn yourself some crypto for free for playing video games. Um, And we probably should, that that might be something to touch even a little bit more. And I know that we're kind of both um, big about that, but um, yeah, it could be something that we could potentially touch more on, but share your thoughts. Yeah, Yeah, I think we'll we'll definitely have a, a regular segment, a weekly segment. So basically the plan is I'm reaching out to a bunch of presenters this week. Um, And if you're watching this and you think you might be one, please reach out to me. My intention is to go live every day at, at least once a day um i think there'll be also time for just to, as we said just playing video games like doing a screen share there's a particular play to earn game called blanco's block party which i like the experience of you know some play to earns aren't that fun but this one i find really fun it's a bit like sack boy from those of you who played little big planet and you run around as a bit of a platformer and it's got an awesome hip-hop soundtrack and it's yeah i really like it so i just enjoy that as an experience so i'll be doing that live but if you want to um get involved let me know and by the end of this week i'll have a regular program putting out as to when you can sort of jump in and and you might have that particular niche that you want to learn about more with regular content i thought maybe we could have a quick look just for fun at uh, crypto slam looking at the trading volume of nfts Mm. looking at solonar just so people get used to even if just in front of their face enough times they might get used to the interface and showing the difference between OpenSea and Solanart. How about that for just the next five minutes? I think it's good, man. I Sweet. Think it's good. Um, do we have any questions? Sorry, I haven't checked. Um, we have yeah. one here. Yeah. Um, we've got one from Victoria saying, hey, is Sandbox in the metaverse or is it a separate DAP? Cool, interesting question. Really good yeah. question. So um, <laughs> there is no in the metaverse yet. Yeah. Um, basically they're all separate dApps, decentralized apps. Um, and you could even say that the metaverse includes web two as well. I saw a, a chart actually, I might even grab it. It could be good to show, um, some web two. Maybe, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Or, and then I'll, I'm going to grab a, a chart. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I'm contrary to, I mean, and I can't really have too much of a go at Mark Zuckerberg, but contrary maybe to, to what could have come across as the perception from the announcement with Facebook, um, you know, replacing its parent name with Meta. Um, Obviously they they know the massive opportunity that's in Metaverse and digital landscape and all that kind of thing. Um, There isn't an actual Metaverse. So there isn't an actual, this is the only Metaverse, you know what I mean? And then everyone has to join this Metaverse. Um, Like what um, Atlas just said, there are multiple ones being created at the moment um that you can connect into um sandbox is just one of the i guess you could say most popular ones um it's one that um um how much of a trailblazer is sandbox it's pretty much it's it's right up there isn't well it? yeah i mean the one that was ahead of it initially was called decentraland with the yeah. um token mana and that was yeah. definitely sort of the the trailblazing one and then for some reason sandbox i think because of the art style it was a little bit more like minecraft they started to get a lot more influence attraction you know snoop dog decided to do a, a 
a um a performance in there and so yeah. for, in my mind also the development community is really big there's a lot of twitch streamers yeah. and there's youtube channels and there's a lot of people encouraging the creation in the space so i mm. personally feel it's a little bit more welcoming and a lot of the projects i follow like super farm for example with elio trades he's got a yeah. partnership with sandbox you've got a, a lot of these people that are in the space that are wanting to get land you've got for example cyber kongs which are now a huge blue chip uh, nft yeah. project they've got land there and they established their you know the banana shop and all the voxel kongs as as having like a, a a membership club home there so it just seems to be like the the community decides which one they really want to back and yeah. for some reason sandbox feels like the more true nft builder kind of community um yeah yeah so just to just to speak on that for a moment i'm going to bring a chart across here which is interesting um from who posted this let's have a quick look it's someone called rex woodbury um, on Twitter. So here's a chart. He says the metaverse ecosystem. And I kind of want to um, talk to this on a few levels. So he's got things like digital property and F NFTs, which you can get through OpenSea, Rarible, Sandbox. You've got crypto payments through, you know, G Google Pay or Coinbase. You've got e-commerce, social messaging, such as Discord, Telegram. You've got AR, VR, communications, media, developing, publishing and virtual game space. So the idea with the metaverse, and, and this is what my argument would be, is that anyone who says that they are building a metaverse doesn't really understand the word metaverse. And it's fine not to understand it because these are new words and we're finding the language of what they mean. In my estimation, there can only ever be one metaverse um, because otherwise we're not understanding the idea of what meta means, which means beyond. So the high, whole silo effect of any one platform, game, website, app, etc. The exciting thing is that it can interoperate, interoperate. And that's one of the aspects of NFTs is the interoperability due to protocols, meaning due to standards set in the ERC tokens or the file formats so that my sword in one game can be carried by another character in another game or so that my points that I earn over here in my social media can be transferred to some kind of other interaction elsewhere. And that is where we start to get the true power of decentralized meta verse so it's the universe connecting socket and so we're talking about oh yeah the metaverse of sandbox the metaverse of decentraland the metaverse metaverse of crypto voxels which is another one and the last one i put on that list would be somnium space so those four are essentially worlds like little virtual reality spaces that have internal ecosystems with sandbox they've got a game development engine as well so you can actually make games they've got a mm. marketplace they've got land to buy you can hold real like conferences and events there so in some ways they are like an entire universe and that's fine we can have many universes but the metaverse is always going to be that most outer sheath that links everything together so the one thing that i don't necessarily like about this chart i just brought forward is a lot of it is web 2 kind of centralized mm. things like disney and amazon and blah blah yeah they've got a, a concept yeah. here which is good in that there's different portals to access different technologies and they yeah. all fall it's metaverse doesn't just mean gaming and nfts and sandbox kind of stuff it can involve every aspect of online life however there is either in operation now or will be a decentralized version Mm. of all of these apps so i probably wouldn't have this as my chart to use but at least it gives you kind of an idea of what the metaverse is so that's yeah. that's a little yeah. bit of a, a long quest uh, answer but um no i i think um i'm just looking at victoria's yeah yeah so she got it she says okay got it cool uh so, yeah and oh yeah i felt uh yeah so victoria said yeah i felt really irritated and facebook calling themselves metaverse as it's not going to be decentralized yeah and it's I think it's a valid point. Um, so, yeah. I think a few of us did. <laughs> I think um, in this question here, um, tell me the difference between Metaverse, what Facebook is doing with what is mm. Meta. So um, the way I would think of it is that Facebook are going to be like Disney. Um, mm. They are going to have, they've been pumping in whatever billions of dollars they want into the, the artists to create them. I'm sure they're going to poach a lot of great Metaverse artists and bring them under their umbrella. Mm. And I'm, I would love to be wrong. But I assume what he's going to try and do is to own all the IP, a bit like Disney owning Mickey. You know, so everything that yeah. gets built in under Meta. I mean, I think their actual Metaverse space is called Horizon. So it's not even called Meta, but that's going to be the place where you can hang out with your friends and such. So they'll have a really easy to use, very addictive, siloed Metaverse, so to speak. Um, 
and they'll probably pump in a lot of artists, get all the cool, they'll be poaching everything that's cool, they'll go and do yeah. and replicate in their own space. And the good thing from our point of view, being the decentralized web, is that he's going to do the job of onboarding probably millions, if not billions of people by making it simpler, like Apple did with the, the mm. GUI, the graphics user interface. Clicking buttons, they've got some, because they're a centralized entity, they will take some of the risk out of it. Probably they'll have like an, a wallet that they own, mm. and then they yep. can reimburse you if you get scammed you know so there'll be some kind of safety net and a lot of people might go through that so thank you for doing yeah. all that onboarding mark zuckerberg but essentially only if he open sources it only if he starts to share code only if he takes away any copyright only of any ip would i consider it to be truly like a decentralized web creation yep i have nothing else to add to that apart from that because i don't want to get super negative um <laughs> and i think it's um Look, I think it's good that he's talking about it, but um, like everything, you know, I, I, it always hits me with ulterior motives because like, for example, you know, when someone, something gets too big, he just buys them out, right? He did it with WhatsApp. He did it with Instagram. Like you, you, if he thinks he can just buy all the best things here, it's just not going to happen, um, especially from um, where it's getting created. So, yeah, so I think that's good. Um, but it's just also important to remember, um, like what we said that, yeah, when he talks about meta and metaverse, it's not like that's the one and only. Yeah, absolutely. Um, cool, man. Cool, cool, cool. Um, well, dude, I, I do have to jump off in a sec. I've just got another call I've got to do, but, um, dude, it's been a, it's been a pleasure chatting. Um, do you want to, um, cause I just saw the time has creeped up on me and mm -hmm. I do have to jump off on a call. Do you want to run the giveaway? Um, mm -hmm, and course. just hit, hit me up and let me know who yep. it is. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, um, yeah, I'll transfer it. Tra I'll, I'll be in contact. I'll, whoever it is, I'll message you on discord. Um, I'll be in contact and yeah, I'll get it get the uh the cool nft transferred over to you let's do it cool man i'll run that right now i'll get go to I'll get excited awesome i'll crank the sirens and we will announce the winner right now let's get awesome some... guys it's been a pleasure talking to you sorry i do have to jump um but um let's chat soon and uh keep being awesome i'll chat to you soon yeah. see you brother see you, thanks for being here Bye. easy all right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we will be finishing soon, but those of you who have stayed all the way to the end get to see the actual giveaway. Um, I'm gonna, and keeping things uh, decentralized and accessible and royalty free, I'm gonna come across here and give a big shout out to Free Music Archive. This is what it's all about, you know, making your work accessible for Creative Commons. So in order to play our exciting reveal music, I'm just gonna go here, Let's browse FMA Free Music Archive. And this is going to be our hero. Anyone who's watching the stream, give me a number. Um, which which should be our, our victory song? Or maybe I should just write victory in here. Victory. There we go. Komiku, victory. It's time for adventure, I'm guessing. Cool. All right, let's play that. And I'm going to bring out the names. And we're going to roll some dice. Let's see what this music sounds like. Can you guys hear that? Oof. Pathos. Don't make me cry. This is meant to be celebratory. So here we have the names. Here we have the names of the people who are going to win. Look, this is a lot less victorious than I intended it to be. But, you know, we've got to go with what we got. So we've got places 1 to 16. And by the sounds of it, this moment might change your life forever. I remember it was nearing the end of 2021. I signed up with the Crypto Collective. I just happened to join the Twitch stream and Discord and I didn't realize that I had such a good chance of winning a free, non-fungible token. I remember tuning into that Twitch that day and uh, my name was one of 16. I didn't let myself, you know, get too high hoped because I didn't want to feel the brutal crushing of my soul if I didn't win. But I had to admit that some part of me thought it might be me. And so now, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a random number generator 
and I'm going to click it exactly 16 times because we've got 16 people. After the 16th click, so I'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. When I say 16 and click, I will not click again. And whichever number is left on the screen will correlate to the winner of the first non-fungible token given away by the Crypto Collective live on Twitch. Thank you for being here, ladies and gentlemen. And here we go now to ask the robot who it will be. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do you know your number? Tokens are given away like water from the cherub's eyes as they sing, as they sing, the demise of fiat currency. Thank you for being with us. That was very emotional, thanks to that free music archive song. <laughs> and I hope that um, I hope that YouTube doesn't give me some kind of copyright infringement because it was free. Creative Commons. We might wrap it up there. We've been going for over an hour. We'll try and keep these things succinct. No, we won't. That's a lie. I don't look. I don't want to start our relationship off on a lie. Sometimes these things will go for a very long time, because this is my life right now. I'm happy to be a metaverse junkie. D Gen life in the moon. If needs to be hunty pranting. Uh. This is what happens when my co-hosts leave and I'm left at the steering wheel alone and drunk on happiness. Um, but I will wrap up now. In the blaring eyes of the sun. This has been episode, oh, I should know, it's like five from the Crypto Collective on Twitch. I'm having a really good time. Thanks for being early founding members. I'm really sorry if you didn't win because there's 15 people. That's the thing about competitions. Often there's more heartbreak than happiness. So maybe we should work out a way <laughs> that they can be more happiness. Everyone, that, it's like those participation awards in, in like primary school. But that's the thing. When you got one of those simply for participating, it took the value away of those people that actually won. So no, no, no. A bit of capitalism, a bit of competition can be healthy. Survival of the fittest. And due to you putting your name in, having an identifiable name in both Twitch and Discord, um, and the algorithm that chose you, you, Lons Harvey, is that right? Yeah, Lons Harvey, or Lon Sharvey, or Lo Nsharvi, or Mr. or Mrs. or they L dot on Sharvi, or Lons Harv V, whatever it is, you're going to get one. One being an NFT. And I believe that you also get to choose whether it's on the Solana or the Ethereum blockchain. That's enough for me. Thank you for being here. You are amazing for helping give lifeblood to this process. And please join the Crypto Collective for more good stuff on Discord. That's it for me today. And I'll see you again tomorrow for more crypto.